Welcome everybody to the Monday, October 24, 2022 meeting, joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and Conway Finance Committee. All the meetings to order. First item on the agenda, vote to approve. Oh, supposed to be. That's right. So with me today is Select Board Member Eric Goldman and Chris Waldo. And uh, I'm Philip Kemp. Got asked to do introductions. Uh, first item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of October 11th. I will take a look at them. Move to approve those minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Warrants, we have uh, three and a half warrants, I suppose. Uh, what the student activity fund warrant, which doesn't really count as an, a real warrant, it's for $43.95. Um, and then our accounts payable warrant, for $147,237, dollars and eighty cents. The payroll warrant, $115,276.99, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $29,024. We'll take a look at them. We saw the most, the most important expenditure was we did pay Habitat for Humanity, $45,000 in town meeting. So that, that transaction went through this week. Um, Move to approve the minutes or the warrants. Second. All right. All right. That's unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris? Um, yes, I attended the capital board meeting. Um, was at the highway facility ribbon cutting. And uh, finish my cybersecurity. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those happens. Still working on it. None for me. All right. Was that a Frontier Capital Committee meeting and a um, grammar school meeting and ribbon cutting at the highway facility, which I enjoyed? Um, Nice to see that happen. It was a milestone in public life. And just, just, just so that you know that the, uh, the, the school, the school, the, the uh, standardized test scores were discussed and everything we did really statewide. We did were, were like a, the top, whatever. And you heard all that, saw all these headlines this week about. How the schools have cratered, the, the scores have cratered. They have everywhere but Conway. Um, and, and actually, we got, they, they were so good that they got a, a letter from DESE, the, the Department of Elementary Education, acknowledging the equality that, that they, they, they noticed that the scores, that there was hardly any difference between any groupings. There was no, no difference between. It's so socioeconomic. The the there's what thirty one percent of families at the grammar school are eligible for free and reduced lunches. Mm -hmm. um, they had the same exact scores as the cohorts that did not. Uh, the you know, whatever the the um the, similar that the kids that are disabled actually have higher test scores than the general student population as a cohort. Which they caught notice of that in Desi too. It was just really phenomenal. So someone's doing something right. Um, public comments, anybody? Unfinished business. Mm -hmm. The joint committee, joint finance committee will have to wait until there's a we know when they're expected to arrive. Contact us in any way. Yeah, I mean, I heard we got one. Alan told me it was six o'clock at the time. Uh, but he knows the deal. All right, so we're one short. We'll get to that one again. Um, new business. Well, since Bob is here, one of the items in the new business is. We Bob Armstrong to the Capital Improvements Committee. God bless you, Bob. You are a glutton for punishment. Wonderful. I can't say no. 
Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. We're very grateful. But Verity said I had to come down and introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was more fun than Zoom. Uh, yeah. And I'm thrilled because this means that now there's a quorum on the capital improvement. Ooh. So, yes. Yeah. So, we can actually have official meetings and stuff. So, that's great. So, I'll move to appoint Bob Armstrong to the Capital Improvements Committee. Is there an end date? Is there a date? Um, to the end of this? Boy. Six months? I, I, no. <laughs> I would say it would be three years, just like, um, you know, in other words, it would be the appointment as of tonight going through 6.30.25. If we can do it longer than that, I'd be up for that. I'll second that appointment. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So do we have a quorum now? That's what I'm suddenly worried about. Uh, you will as soon as word gets here. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> a couple of things that came up off the list. Um, the, uh, the, the state ethics training, so those little uh, the, the training that everybody has to do <laughs> when we sucker them into signing up for a committee. <laughs> no. <laughs> And, and actually, it's one of the things, you know, you, you tell people, oh, you have to do an online, now it's an online training. Um, and we've lost people because they haven't wanted to do that. So, so this is a new state mandated, you have the chain, well, go ahead. Well, actually, all it is is that they're, they're doing it on a new portal. Yeah. And the question before us that you know we have no choice about doing it, right? But the question is whether or not we wanted to host the portal ourselves or if we want to send people to their portal. I vote to send them to yeah, their portal. Same thing. <laughs> <I'm annoyed. laughs> if I had a vote. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised we're even giving people the choice. Right? I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to post that on that site. Yeah, and that maybe you know. Maybe something to do with the larger town, and maybe if the folks already have something going. I, I don't know. So um, I think the, the proposal is go log it, have people log into the state's portal. Yes. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Great. So I will contact them. Oh. Juneteenth. Might as well do that. Okay. So you know, I've been trying to been trying to finesse this in the in the vain, impossible hope that we don't have to supply another paid employee uh, in paid holiday. This is this is you know number four hundred thirty seven of unfunded mandates that you get from state and federal government, and just. The school, we dealt with it just by requiring as a matter of policy that the school year never go as long as Juneteenth because that's a $40,000 benefit to, for that one day. So for the town, it's a much less of a, but we were still trying to maybe swap out. That I found out that the idea to swap for, for, for the one holiday that was potentially swappable, which, would, which was the day after Thanksgiving, that was an extremely unpopular option among town employees, mm -hmm. like like really unpopular. Um, and um, you know, and the the, the, the feeling that I, the feedback that I got was, you know, it's not our fault that they required this holiday, and it, why do you like ruin our Thanksgiving weekend as a result? Mm -hmm. Just so, um, you know, I think we did cost it out when it was what was it? It was. Yeah, it's, it's not like a thousand dollars. It's not a huge amount. So, um, and didn't town council indicate that we really don't? Have yeah, that, choice? yeah, that was a whole other thing. They said legally we kind of have to. But, yeah, um, correct. Not that that was convincing in any way, but uh, so the the proposal is to just grin and bear it and make it a, a paid holiday, like the state and federal law says that you're supposed to. 
So that's the motion that I'm making. I second that. All in favor? Aye. So we do have a quorum at the same time. <laughs> you guys want to come ready? Twice. <laughs> sure. You let us, we'll behave ourselves. <laughs> uh, I don't want to ask you know, too much. <laughs> Roy's going to be joined virtually. Yeah. So joined now by the Conway Finance Committee. If you want to call your meeting to order, we can get started. Roy is waiting for the Zoom meeting. You ahead for Zoom meeting? I don't have a waiting room. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you need a hard copy? Yes, I did. Nice business. I only, I'm sorry, I didn't think. Yeah, I think I had the packet for. Yeah. So there should be three together there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did it right here. So that's the hard part we need to do. Did you figure it out? Is he coming on or? <laughs> did, did he got that message? Yeah, he hasn't responded. We should probably get going. He's not a professor, he's not a PhD. So we have to write this thing. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to go with highway department? Highway department sure. sure, you want to call your okay. committee to order? Will we uh, call the finance committee to order jointly with the Honorable Select Board of Congress. Officially welcome your new member. Good, good recruiting well, job, by the way. <laughs> I just, you, you, you're recruited, actually, for our naked you're at the picnic. Right? <laughs> That's right. Very good. good. John Crane is our newest member. John is a newer resident of Conway. Oh, right. That's right. Your wife so is, so that she's on the planning committee. Uh, zoning board. Of zoning board. So yeah. Even better. So between the zoning board and the finance committee, this is how you win friends and influence people. This is great. <laughs> You want to say anybody back on that? I think you have a great back. Uh, yeah, yeah, just so everybody knows. Uh, currently, I'm a CFO for a, a nonprofit organization in Boston. I've been with the organization for just about nine years. Prior to that, I was a CFO, COO with another, uh, another organization in Cambridge. Um, before that, I ran my own company for 10 years. And so I feel like I've got a decent background. In, in, in finance to be able to bring that to bear. I've also, on my prior town, I served on the cable and access committee for 10 years. Uh, we actually formed the committee and then transitioned into a nonprofit corporation. And we could use you here too. <laughs> <laughs> Is so, that entangled with the school budget? Uh, well, I've been to town meetings in, in, in this town and my prior town, and I, I know what the school School budget looks like. Tangled. I have tangled. never. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what tangled. tangled but, but he's got a tangle right off the bat. He's got a tangle. Like, well, but, okay. Uh, but I do know it's the like single largest one line item in the town budget. Which one's the P under? Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. But this job, I learned the expression map, not gap. So map is. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, in terms of accounting, yeah. yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. So the first first one on um, 
it's up to you. Highway fire or frontier capital stabilization fund. I'd say go with the fire department if you make cheap payment. I say you do. One option I see is Conway Fire Department on Main Street. Is that the one? That's That's Siri. That's it. That's Siri. That's Siri. Good night, Siri. Good night. So, um, Chief, you want to talk about your request? Yes, I have uh, uh, submitted a capital project request to go to Veronique, the town office, in hopes of replacing the existing 2013 old police cruiser that I used with the fire department and upgrade to a newer 23 uh, pickup with a crew cab or possibly looking at maybe some anywhere from one to three year old vehicles that haven't got a lot of miles on them that would serve the purpose of the fire department. Uh, the reason we have gone and that's requested for a pickup for the crew cab is that we found with the existing police crews we have in our calls where we handle uh, a trailer in the back, towing a towing trailer with a uh, rescue boat and four wheeler in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually that is a five to six man crew that goes out of the town and uh, goes all on calls with that. And there's really not enough room in the cruiser for everybody. So by going to crew cab, you can actually get six full people in because it's a pop up front arm west. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea of the bone pickup also was the, the cruiser we have now handles the trailer we have, but the firefighters are requesting that in the near future we're going to try to look for a much larger trailer. Because if you knew that little trailer that sits up beside the town drive, everything is jammed in there like a sardine. Mm -hmm. And they literally even have to deflate the boat to get it in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Given that trailer to us by uh, ETR. So we were gracious enough to use that for nine time being in there. Hopefully, going to be looking for us a much bigger one for us here in the near future that we possibly can get for free also. So, in, in going along with that and discussing this with the firefighters, they all suggested that if I'm going to try replacing this cruiser, that we, we should replace it with a pickup truck. So we'll drive pickup truck. I'll be the half to three quarter ton. I quoted the new one I've quoted is a three quarter ton Ford pickup. Uh, the only reason I use that as the new model is because that's under a state bid contract and the local dealer is right here in Florida. Mm -hmm. Mark you look at used vehicles, used pickups. I mean, there's a bunch of them here on the, on the back of your sheet. You'll see it in a whole list of the other ones. Um, what you find are the least, a lot of the users, there's some are loaded vehicles. What I mean is, there's every possible thing you could think of on them because they're most of them are trade in from lease vehicles. And they're priced right up there. I mean, I, you can see that I got one, I think there's one listed in here for $64,000 for your big because it's loaded. Most all in that. The bottom one on my list, if you look on page. Silverado. Silverado, yes. Pickup. The 2020 Silverado pickup. Actually, one that sits in Greenville at the Chevrolet garage. It's got uh, 38,000 miles on it. It's not a fully loaded pickup. I mean, it's, it's not, it hasn't got a lot of electrics on it. It's got the adequate stuff that the fire department would need, four wheel drive, tow package, and stuff like that. But it hasn't got sun, move, sun roofs and all this other stuff that runs the prices out of sight. And they got that one listed for 41950 So I know I originally asked for a new one, and then Veronique asked me to, do, I guess, some of your group could ask to see if. Talking to about used vehicles, that's why I put these other used ones in. You get your pictures of them too. If you look at the packet, there's actual pictures from different dealerships and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was asking for 61,000, 68, 7, uh, 470. That could be reduced by, could be reduced by 10, as much as $10,000. Even the new vehicle, because in that 
$68,000 is a $10,000 figure for uplifting of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by uplifting is meaning putting lights on it, installing radios that have to be put in all the equipment that has to put in for the fire heaters. Um, that's what I call uplifting. And that I have talked to another organization. I have some funds in a uh, in a um, donations account. The fire department has a donations account that has a fairly good sized amount of money in it. And I have talked to another organization that has not officially voted, but they have possibly expressed opinions of like to donate some money to the fire department, some items like that. Yes, okay. but we may be able to make that ten thousand dollars without what they go away. Taxpayers do not come up taxpayers' funds. So uh, I guess I'm open for questions. Um, Chief Baker, sure. Um, if you buy a used vehicle. Are you going to, is your lifespan of that vehicle still 10 years from the day of manufacture? That's a good question. I do not put a lot of miles on you. Not a lot of miles a year. You're probably lucky we put 4,000 miles a year at the maximum. Maybe even less than, maybe less than 3,000. Yeah. How often would you guess talk to both those out? Again, this year, it went on and went out once. Yeah. Uh, last year and in, in 2019, we were out like eight or ten times. Uh -huh. and, it, and, it, and you just don't understand. So the trailer and everything, that's mostly for when the boat's going. Right. Yeah. Boat forward. Okay. You can see that it's, just, it's packed pretty solid. And then the unfortunate thing is when we get to where we're going, we have to take time to reinflate the boat because it's a small boat, it's like a small, uh, rescue boat. And you have to take time to float the floor back. They had a bigger trailer, which would take a bigger vehicle than when we got down to it. Uh, they would, wouldn't have to spend the time to blow it up and be safe until we would play it in the truck. In the trailer. So, um, is it normal to get 10 years out of the vehicle? Just, I'm just curious. I don't know. I've, never had, I've always you know. had a used vehicle. This is the second used vehicle the fire department's had okay. before this. Well, before we had the old. Uh, no, this is the third, excuse me, the third one. The first one we had an old police cruiser mm -hmm. from the company. Mm -hmm. When that one died, a town went out and bought me a seven, they spent $7,200. I bought an old Chevy Tahoe. Mm -hmm. It was very old, very tired. That only lasted a couple of years. Yeah. And the one I'm driving now is the replacement with Kenny Bodies in the cruiser. That's the 2013. Right. Okay. So right. that's why that's where my 10 year figure comes right. from. Right. Since we're 10 model years later here and you're talking about replacing it. So. I personally don't think, you know, I, I, I don't know how to say that about your 10 year uh, mm -hmm. request because, you know, that's so how the vehicle performs, I guess. Okay. How bad it rots out. I mean, yeah. what we got now, and if you notice in your packet, I've given you a list of uh, uh, the letter that I was uh, the form that I was sent from the mechanic that does work on it now. Yeah. He said, you gracious enough to put together a uh, statement as if there wasn't wrong with it. What he thinks is going to be going wrong with it shortly. Right now, I'm not driving it much because it's having starting, starting problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I thought at first it was the starter, but after talking to a bunch of mechanics, and stuff, Think it is, and they don't really know what it is. Sometimes it starts, and sometimes it won't. <clears throat> and when it won't start, you've got nothing. You got no lights. You got no interior lights. You make up no nothing. And the batteries are fully up to charge. And if you wait a few minutes, and maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes, maybe half hour, try again. It'll start right up. I had a car like that. It drove me half crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you don't know. So I don't drive it much now. Like I like can wait all night. I don't want to get stranded so many times. All right, when it goes on calls, you'll see because it's running. Um, so I guess that's the answer to the question too about why you know the, the the pattern that we've developed was police get new cruiser, you get old cruiser. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, that was the choice, yes. No. Right. And and so the question that I gotten is, you know, what's wrong with just waiting for the old to, to you get your old cruiser again? And I guess that answers that question. Yeah, I guess the gist of my question is more like if we, if we can save twenty thousand by buying a used vehicle, you know, how will are we gonna you know, not not gap the amortization, but just experience the you know the annual cost per per year on that vehicle? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's one that the number of crunchers say it never pays to get a new car, a new vehicle, and the used one is mechanically yeah. sound. And Given the cost of frame right is rest. Oh, right. You, you yeah. might also note that, that that cost that I estimated and it showed you for the new Ford, actually three quarters on Ford pickup, is under state bid, which is just about ten thousand dollars less than what they saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you go to a used vehicle, you're not going to get a state bid on it at all. That's it. Again, used vehicles still go for free. I have a question, Chief Baker, and that is with the uh, upgrades to the emergency response system that we're talking about with the current Commission Council of Governments. The electronics for this new vehicle, would that have any synergy? Or is that completely separate? No, with Bluetooth and wireless and all that. Obviously, 2013 didn't have it. No, they you know, the, you know, the new vehicle. <laughs> Uh, again, I don't know because I haven't investigated the used equipment. The, the new one has Bluetooth on it. Uh, it has a, I think it's got a power outlet on it, mm -hmm. AC power outlet on it if you need it. I think that's real handy. Mm -hmm. um, the backup cameras and all other stuff on yeah. it. The standard equipment now in all the newer vehicles. Um, it's a big what would be nice, and, and, and we run into a, 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 somewhat of a serious problem sometimes with this. Is when we go out on a call out of town or a town that we not normally go to, uh, is finding the location and how to get there. Where the newer pickups, you can just program them into your screen and it comes mm -hmm. up and tells you, think on the road, you're going to you want to take a right or left and bring you right to the address where you want to. Mm -hmm. The old method is like one of my firefighters has his cell phone out, hoping they're going to connect in between <laughs> losing yeah, out your cell phone service and stuff there. on the way. And, and guessing by golly as to how we're going to get there. You got to pick up a local on the way. Well, maybe that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I have so, an extra um, The new one would be perfect for that. And I, I don't know about the used ones. <clears throat> the ones like I quoted are, are usually two or three years old. The, the one, the Silverado, it gives a list of features and it says it's a 4G Wi Fi hotspot. <laughs> Maybe one day, not now. Thank you. So I'm wondering on the on the estimate of the used vehicles, is the only one is the last one at, at 2020 it's over ten thousand dollars less than all the others, but it doesn't say it's a crew cap. It is a crew cap. It is a crew cap. Okay. Since if you want to see it through, it's a order. Well, it was there this past week, so it's it's on your used drive. I did look it over and um, stopped to look at it. Look at the driving license. Got the information from the sales number. That is a, that is a crew cap. I didn't look at anything but crew cap. Okay. And I, you know, I will just just from looking at the warrants every week. The, I mean, I the repairs on the current one. It just seems like the warrants would always just have a thousand, two thousand, in just repair system. Keep the current one. I have put a lot of money in that since we got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and once the transmission goes, it's going to be a huge. Yeah. Um, and also, the thing that he talks about the, uh, uh, we read that he talks about the line starting to seep and leak underneath. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever. We did we have a problem with the air conditioning earlier this year that, that I spent money on, but the vehicle now only has what I would call half an air conditioning system. Because the, the, to save on the expense of repair, he cut off the back section of the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So anything back of the front seat, there's no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Not that you need it, but it, it was standard. Mm -hmm. You stick all the juniors. <laughs> so that, uh, that, that was to eliminate the save well over $1,000 more in repair. And, and Chief, any vehicle you buy has to be uploaded, correct? Yes. Okay. Who's the mechanic? Uh, it's Maniki and Rita, one of the guys who lives in Conway. Uh, he's the head of the mechanic company. Billy P. Billy P. You know, Billy lives right at the post office. One of the real nice, nice down to earth mechanic. He appears to be saving us. Well, I think there's quite a bit of money in the mm -hmm. compared to other, other locations. Yeah. So, with all the alterations that need to be done, any warranties, null and void, right? On what? On any new vehicle. If we had a warranty, we're purchasing it, but making a bunch of alterations to it, all those warranties are gone. Or no, I don't think so. So you still get your full vehicle warranty. Okay. 
Does the dealer do the uplifting for you? No, we have a okay, private contract. License contract. Yeah. I have the liability policy. Yeah. Okay. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I have a question in terms of process. Now the, the capital committee is meeting this week, is that right? Are they going to make a recommendation on this too? What, what do you have in mind? How do you want how do you want to work it? Uh, yeah, I know this is the first time we've had the, the capital. Well, this was a discussion and the vote was going to be November 7th. Okay. okay. That's what we had talked about. Wait, tonight is tonight is just a discussion. Correct. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And, and we're also going to be voting to open the special town meeting warrant tonight, and we'll be voting to close it to seven because that's the time frame that we need to do the seven. Because you don't do it the eighth, because people are probably watching the election results. Right? You know, that's a good point. <laughs> we might be able yeah. to even push it back a week, to be honest. All right, that might work. We're, we're just checking because. It depends on how long it'll take the tenant, but we might be able to, to sneak in right. on the 14th and close the warrant. A couple other comments I have about this, uh, this new request for the newer vehicle is when I was uh, thinking about or talking to, or talking to other fire chiefs, I found out that South Deerville and the town of Monica are both have the new, the new uh, board. <laughs> and I talked to them a lot about. I have can still get more quotes. Uh, I have I've tried to get a quote from Chevrolet, uh, but I guess I haven't reached the right person because the, their Chevrolet is uh, supposed to be like as McGovern and Greenfield, but they have no representatives there from state bids. Uh, so I have that, I've Shot a couple of lines out to their state bid contract at first, which is down east of that state. I think they own 20 some odd dealerships now. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball, mm -hmm. size and shape. Yeah. What and about Sarah? Sarah does not. No. Uh, it's uh, MHQ in, in down the eastern part of the state and uh, Markov is out of point. Mm -hmm. is, is the new deal. And that's where both of these Donalds both got there because they're close to. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I don't... Just so you know that you know double towns are experienced the same similar thing and they're close by. So you know, I guess you it's kind of good to get a recommendation sometimes from the different departments like yeah, that yeah. have the experience and they've had them a couple of years. So we do this in the guidance basis right now. It was up to 68,470. If you get a used vehicle, it might be less, or if you have to go with this, whatever. Mm -hmm. but, you know, guidance figure. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a big, that's a big difference though, because that's, I mean, the difference between new and used is 1% of our non school spending, non school municipal budget. That's 1%, just that 20. Uh, and the difference is instead of handing it down from the youth police group, right? I mean, really, it's, it's right. all the money. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think the chances of the, the, the lower the number, the greater the chances of success um, of getting yeah. voted. Yeah, of getting it voted. Although, you know, I don't. Yeah, the don't, savings can cover that holiday you got to pay for. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I guess it all back in the time. I actually was counting the vote just to whether they want to go to more use. Bob, is there a use pickup that could get that, that we could do the same swap that you do with the chief? What do you mean by that, Bob? Well, right now, you the chief is handing down a, a, the used cruiser, uh -huh. but is there a use pickup that? Are the fire department to get rid of? That somebody's getting rid of. I have not seen that. I, I don't think it's as common as people. I know Bernie spoke about uh, possibly looking into the state um, for state uh, procurement laws and their their state uh, options they have. Well, uh, Kenny and I, because we were requested by the board of selectmen several different times in the past 20 some odd years, <laughs> is to look into it and go and explore it. And we both went and explored the state equipment that was coming up for bid for yeah. auction. And it's a junkyard. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a junkyard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't get rid of it unless it's a piece of junk. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to yeah. buy something at the auction, you'd have to bring it home on a record in pieces. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what go to it to you? I, well, I meant within the town, not I yeah. wasn't thinking of this. So. 
Any more questions here? Roy, do you have any questions, comments? Yeah, hold on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, no, it's the, it's the age old. I mean, I missed half of the conversation, unfortunately, but I sort of, uh, sort of know where it was going. Um, so well, let me ask you, uh, Bob. Um, so we only got what, eight years out of the existing thing? Uh, well, from the time it was purchased through, I guess that's probably it. Yeah. Okay. I think the biggest killer on that was the uh, somewhat abusive it got when it was in the okay. And it has probably a vital time. It's probably got 500,000 miles on vital time. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, so let's say we get eight years out of the thing, which is maybe a worst case scenario. And the purchase is what, 60 grand, something like that, give or take, 58. Is that, I don't have, am I correct there? So we're talking the use, like- The use uh, could be 40, the use could be 42. Yeah, but don't, you know what? I think you're, have you, have you gone to a, um, not, a, not the dealer lately, have you gone to somebody maybe just below the dealer in terms of service? They're not giving it away. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna pay dearly for repairs on this thing if you buy it used. That, that's, that. I mean- You're just, probably gonna come without a warranty. What's um, that? I'm, I'm sorry? If you have a dealer warranty, Roy, that's it. If you buy a right. used, yeah, you, yeah. you get a 30 day deal of warranty. Well, uh, well that's my them are three years old. Right. That's my point. The thing will be in the shop sit four months, six months after you buy it. And the bill will probably be a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks. And I'm not even talking about tires or brakes or any of that stuff. I'm talking about just the just the weird stuff that happens, even though I will say that the new vehicles are uh, are much better than even the 2013 vintage. So Phil, what I'm I'm trying to tell say Phil from my point of view, 42 grand to save 20 grand, you're not saving 20 grand. Okay, you might be saving a few grand, but it ain't 20. And you know, and it's the difference between having a a uh, at least in the first uh, 4 years anyway, a reliable vehicle versus something that is less reliable. That's, that's all. I, I don't really need to I mean, honestly, I, I, I've been around the block with this stuff. And certainly the dealers are not giving their service away. You will you just look at the dealer and it's 600 or $800 uh, for something that's wrong. I'm not talking about an oil change or something like that. So I would have to, I much as I hate to say it, I really hate to say it because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in um, not everything has to be brand new, spanking, shiny new, but I just, I think they've given us very little choice is what I, I think what I'm trying to say. And, the, and, and I also what I'm trying to say is the third tier auto repair shops, they're, st they're still not giving it away either because they're, they're looking at what the dealer charges and they're backing off from there. It's, it's that simple. They, they're not saying I'm going to be half the price of the dealer. Uh, it, it just doesn't work that way. That's it. Well, this price done. could fluctuate down or whisper lower than it, than it quoted originally because uh, two things to take into consideration on this also is, is we'd have to put it out for bid. So you'd have more than one dealer bidding. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe different models and like shovel in Ford bid on something like that. But also, I would request that we probably ask them to take the vehicle that I'm driving now and you know, I don't think they're going to give you five hundred dollars or a thousand or two hundred dollars or fifty bucks. But we want them to take that in and train. Yeah. So that's going to fluctuate the prices down. Just to reestablish, you're saying you're driving this vehicle four thousand miles a year right now. No more than. That. And do you anticipate driving it more if you had a new vehicle? No. No. Oh, okay. No. So it's going to be sitting parked. Unless we start a lot more fire calls. Low usage, a lot of vital time, <laughs> mostly parked. Okay. No, a lot of vital time. 
Well, I don't, I mean, I don't mean the running. Time, running oh, I'm oh, sorry. The only time I think that's what he meant when he said the only said time he was, had 500,000 miles. I, the only time was driven is if I had drawn. No, that's, no. that's running. I don't yeah, know. right. That's what that's. Yeah, running. yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Too. Right. Well, the, this wouldn't be. Idling. It wouldn't. No, it wouldn't be idling. I uh, no, so. I, I get it. It would be just sitting parked. The only use you get is when I go out the meetings. That's last long when I use it. Yeah. Use you get is when I go out the meetings or fire calls. Yes. Or um, do inspections. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the important thing is it starts up. Again, well, I when do you, when you, when I start it twice a week regardless. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Keep the batteries up. I do take it all every Wednesday night for the fire practice. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit exercise. So for the brand new 2023 F250, it says the order to delivery dates anywhere between six to nine months plus. Mm -hmm. So does that mean if we do go forward with ordering a new one? We're still going to have to make repairs to the existing. If you keep, yeah, because you'll need that for nine months. Okay. Hey, uh, Bob, one again, one. again. If you go used, you know, you got to look around, see what's out there. What that's like behind uh, when you get the money to spend. So, Bob, one question: uh, that this is a for a three-quarter ton truck. Yes. Does it need to be three-quarter ton? Well, it was three quarter ton for one reason. Uh, I thought the beginning was to, uh, like I explained to them earlier, the trailer that we towed, we want to get a much bigger trailer, which is heavy in weight and, and takes the most capability to tow. Um, you could still do it a half ton pickup, but to be honest with you, I didn't quote a brand new half ton pickup because the half ton pickups that are out there today are mostly like luxury vehicles. With yeah. a lot of yeah. the yeah. you could, you're right. You're absolutely right. A lot more money. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sometimes ten thousand dollars more than this, this three quarter ton. Yeah, you're right. The three quarter is a standard for for a working truck. Yeah, I agree. Like the the half ton, there used to be a huge towing discrepancy between the half and the three quarter, and that's but narrowed that's a lot. That's narrowed down a lot. Yeah. That's so, mostly, mostly because of people towing campers and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Just make sure the vehicle you got has got the towing package on. Mm -hmm. Well, so you're saying there really isn't a price difference between the one ton and the half, one and a half. If I was to quote a new half ton, I would probably say it has to be more money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then operating, I mean, the, the fuel, the big fuel difference is a bigger engine too. Well, you know, then again, you think about well, the town only has she has at a quick disposal is diesel fuel. So, do you go over diesel pickup? I looked at this board with a diesel engine in it, it's another ten thousand dollars. That is worth mm -hmm. the gas for the diesel, another ten grand. So, do we get to put anything? I know we're not voting on this thing, but we always make a recommendation. Well, and then maybe you know in, in, in the next a couple of weeks can we try to firm up the numbers a little bit even more just can well, you try to firm up the numbers even a little uh, bit which more which one the yours ones or the new ones done oh i mean the only yeah. yours ones i quoted is is ones that are on the lot and this is what they're asking yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean you're you're unfortunately i don't think a deal you could go to a deal and say you got a used vehicle here can you lock it, hold it till right. after right. December? So, <laughs> right. for, in case gonna, we want to buy it, I guess and with, how much do you want? I think they're going to chase me out of the deal. With the new one, could you could you find out whether or not there would be ten thousand dollars less or whatever you know you were going to state this? Right, if you could find out. I could. With, you know, I got to wait for the quote for the shovel A and mm -hmm. stuff, and uh, I can I can ask them. I mean, we're not officially. <laughs> I suppose we could officially put it up to bid now, pending town meeting approval, but I don't care to like that, I don't think. I think that's kind of asking a lot of the dealers to do that. But what were you guys feeling there? So, so you know the state bid? That is a legal bid, and you don't have to go up to bid. Right. And we can, we, we can go buy it right off the state bid. Mm -hmm. Then you probably will not pay the money from these other towns like Ashfield that actually have the 250s. 
did they tell you where they purchased theirs from? Yeah, my one of them from my class. Oh, oh so, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maybe Chevrolet equipped. I would ask Chevrolet to give me a quote on basically the same options that are on the board, which is not a fancy option, but a standard option, and see what they came in this place. You know? Maybe they'll come in a little lower. I don't know. I own the Ford dealer quoted me when he quoted me this truck here, this 23 model. He said, you do know that they're not in manufacturing. They're getting ready to start their manufacturing now mm -hmm. because he had to wait a couple weeks to give me this quote. He said, until they, they wouldn't price it until they started manufacturing the kit. Mm -hmm. I had to wait a couple weeks to get them coping up. Bob, I see a bunch of electric F 250s in there. Electric F 250? Yes. Wow. I don't think they didn't know they even made them. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. Big money, though, huh? Uh, you won't get it for 68,000. Yeah. <laughs> There's an electric Silverado that just came out, 110. That's my story, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. I have spent quite a bit of time on this. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for all the speech. Uh, Thank you, Bob. Just somewhere. Well, that's good again. Yeah. We don't know. Right? It's a good, good, comprehensive presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All set. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So on to. Yeah, on to, on to wood chipper. Yeah. If, if the starter, you can hear it clicking and the battery is fine, alternator. That's turn on and it goes. Yeah. Oh, everything's on. That's wiring machine running. Yeah. Okay. Well, what is it? <laughs> That's Garmin's system. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Garmin around here. <laughs> so, with this now for the highway department capital request, on sweet and. Talk to us about your request for a new wood chipper 18 inch capacity with hydraulic winch. Well, so far the town has not needed a chipper. I mean, we rent one, but we've never been in a situation that's now upon us. We're now, according to town lawyer, we own the trees in the right way. Was not the way it was seen before. <laughs> before we used to, the tree fell down and we just went and pushed it off to the side and the landowner took care of their trees. And we didn't want to be told that the town owns trees in the right of way and on the property on the right of way. So now we have a new. Um, Job to do in the highway department. So well, now when we go to take care of push a tree off the side of the road, we now have to go back and do it ourselves. Not the landowners. For this to happen, we can't. We spend a fair amount of money renting. We did before when we did tree trimming and stuff, but it was a controlled time when we needed the chipper. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't have that option to move some of the trees. Um, the best way to deal with it is to chip as much as you can of it. And then the bigger stuff is probably going to have to get brought back to the highway garage. Once the file gets big enough there, we're going to have to pay somebody to come and grind that stuff up. 
and I'm not sure what they do with the chips of either. So, working problems, I guess. And what other towns are doing is they started wood a wood bank. Um, like a lot of our neighboring towns have started that. I know. Uh, the, the, for people that come and get the wood as firewood. There's a huge liability issues. We'll have to look into the liability yeah. because you don't want people running around with chainsaws on. No, 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 no. The wood is split. What is splitting the wood process? process. Uh, yeah, well, there the it is. The next requisition would be for a splitter, right? Right. right. That's how it was sort of the job. Right. And then, then time. I mean, because time and labor. What nobody's probably understanding is my next year's budget is going to change drastically because of the time mm -hmm. that we're going to have to deal with trees. The reporter just had a big article. I'm pretty sure it was the town of Wendell. And, and the, the, the reporter article said Wendell was negotiated with, in their case, National Grid to do all of their tree work. They're taking down 160 trees. The National Grid wanted to take the trees down. It's, it has to do with their power lines, not anything to do with the town. It's like what basically whatever the reporter got it wrong. But the destroyer and, and, and they talked about their their wood bank uh, where residents could come and cut the trees and and cut that the trees. firewood. Not sure what that's all about. But all I know is that as far as residents or anybody coming on town property, and it's a huge liability. We had the same issue back during the point after the tornado. How to get rid of the wood. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have no issue with it if it was. <laughs> I can see a lot of things happening that can cause the problems, issues that I don't think they want to see. Can, can you refresh me? Um, what's the what's the setback for the town, the easement for the town? Every road is different. Every road is different. Every 20 feet in every road is different. It's, just, it, it's really not the same. Okay. I mean, some roads have different yeah. varying roads. Okay. And minimum is usually two rods, which is three. Because on all the trees you deal with would be owned by the town. So we're saying yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Or the town is yeah, the ownership is sort of separate from the whose responsibility it is to deal with it. And that's really what it is. And um, it's because there's a shade tree commission law since the 1960s, which we've never complied with. Well, it's because it was, I was shown case law saying that the landowner, because the town of Conway only has right of way, that the landowner still owns the soil, the trees, everything there, except for, you know, what the town needs to have for the right of way. Mm -hmm. And well, now I'm now being told that the trees are the town. Is do other have other towns been dealing with this issue in prior years around here, or is this a relatively so, new development? It varies depends okay. on the town and how they deal with it. I know a lot of towns were pretty much the same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. In recent years, in the recent last couple of years, the you, you're supposed to post. Have hearings yeah. to remove any tree. And if you notice in the legal notices, there's been more and more notices posted. Mm -hmm. So it's been something that's probably being brought to everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. So if you if you do chip a tree at the side of the road, then do you also have to have the landowner's permission to put the chips? On their property, no, or one do you of my have other things is for a chipper box. It's, okay, all right. <laughs> I mean, it, um, there's places that we will be able to haul the chips on the mm -hmm. side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, and so you just haul the chips up to the highway garage and, and I'll figure out what we're going to do. So, so you've done some sort of mental calculations around this, and you figured that it's a lot less expensive for us to, to invest in a chipper 
that is to to really know the faded field. Okay. Okay. To clean up a mess on the side of the road, pick everything up, yeah, and then take it to the garage and then deal with it again. Step up in here and then the chipper we've been renting is basically what I'm asking for. And we just had to clean up a huge oak tree. The time is saved by having that big of a chipper in the range and stuff. How big, how big diameter can you throw this chipper? Speaking of 18. Oh, <laughs> well, when, you're, when, you're, when you're out cleaning trees yeah. up, yeah, the trees that fall are, though are, are 100 years old. They're mad, yeah. they're, they're gigantic. They're yeah. 15 inches. It makes me think of the wood bank. Okay. 18 inches. This is that, that's serious. You got to remember though, a lot of the trees that we're be cleaning up are pretty well dead too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the wood isn't going to be. Usable when we start firewood and stuff. Oh, we carbohydrates, not protein. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, in past years, tonight it would work. Tonight we would throw enough heat in tonight. In, in past years, I know we turned this down a number of a number of times. And the, what was the basis that we? It was like the liability insurance were we were concerned with or something. Is that? Ring a bell. Did we turn a chipper that was down? A bucket, that was the bucket loader and the lift. Not the chipper. I don't remember turning a chipper down. No, 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 then over the last 20 it, years, probably. It, not, we, we, it, it was a made not since multiple yearly requests for a stretch for a chipper yeah. years ago. Right. Well, this is, we, we, I know we, there were a number of consecutive years it was turned down uh, before Ron's. Uh, 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 tenure as as a uh, road super road um but so i i'm just hey ron while, while i've got the microphone uh just in the scheme of things what 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 would you view as a more important item the over the fence mower or, or the uh or the wood chipper that's not a fair question <laughs> What's you're, you're i'm something's being added to my duties that oh. Could the you would offend more cannot handle. Could you explain that again? Because I'm I'm just and give me three sentences as to what what's changed here. What we have to that we have to deal with the trees differently than what we've dealt with before. Because because we're being told that, that they're they are town trees. Town's responsibility. Yes. And this is the power. And you're expected company. to cut them down and clean them up. Right. Immediately. Just cut good. them down and let them sit on the side of the road until you no, get around to it. No, that's not, that's not, no, you're, you're confusing things here, there, Bob. It's about trees falling. And when we, we used to push them off to the side and the landowner took care of them. Or not. Or not, but it was their land, and as long as it wasn't an issue for obstructing uh, public safety, it wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Now we're being told that, and the phone calls that have been coming in the last month and a half because of what's been going on about come clean up this tree, that's where all this is coming from. It's not what we took down. Yes, I know there was an issue there, but um, but you're expected to clean it up immediately, not let it sit there until you get a whole lot of them, and then you can rent a chipper and yes. you can do them all at once. You need to have the chipper to chip it right away. And 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 we the, basically when the town now wishes to cut a tree to remove a tree, we now have to have a, a hearing. The select board will also be standing as the shade tree commission. And we have to have a public hearing. Um, and the notice of the public hearing has to be published two weeks in a row in the legal newspaper. And it has to be affixed to the tree that you wish to cut um, as well. And, and then, you know, the time and the date of the hearing, et cetera. And you take testimony and people can come and argue for the pardoning of the tree and 
it gets heated debates and you, you see that the, the new stuff is in the newspaper a lot about in Greenfield in particular, they have some knockdown drag out uh, disputes over like a specific tree in a specific middle of a block and you know, whatever. So that's all so, and it's stuff that we should have been doing and we haven't been doing, but now it's, you know, once, once, once it has been brought to your attention that it is the law, like um, Phil, we're, we're, we being government and all, we're supposed to comply with that. Phil, does that mean the, so the power company can decree whatever tree they, it's, it's a hat, it's, it's threatening the lines. We're taking it down. End of story. They don't have to have a hearing or anything, right? That is correct. They do not, uh, they are not sub, if they declare it to be, there's magic words that they can use that if it's involved at all in power generation, even theoretically, they declare it as such and they're not, there's no, they're, they're free from any local oversight, local government, local, you know, actual like laws. They, they, they trump all of that. Do they remove those trees? They do when they want to. Okay, so so my understanding now, and this is, is based on what the world moves it turns like they don't take them away. What's that right? Yeah, my understanding now, at least based on at least two conversations with neighbors. So basically one side of the road is going to look different than the other side of the road. Because the power company can just wipe out their side of the road, wherever the lines are, where the town is going to have to be much more selective on the other side. That's been true for years, Roy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we're off topic here because isn't the topic about the uh, allocation of funds for the chipper? Well, it's why we need to do it, though. It's, this go, this goes to, that. this is yeah. like the, this is the away from responsibility this is, budget. Yeah, man, this is, these are all very interesting issues. Yeah, this, I would this, like is the context, about, but, this is the context and why this capital well, request is deemed yeah, necessary, this, though. Yeah, this, so, it's I mean, important it's, to understand. It's not, it's, not, it's not necessary in a vacuum. It's like, it's because... When it, when it comes to numbers that you're looking at a big figure here, but, you know, when I was talking with Ron, it's $400 a day to rent a chipper mm -hmm. a day. So that's... And that's a deal. Yeah, so if you're looking at 92,000 divided by 400 is 230 days. This chipper is going to last at least 10 years. Are we saying we're not going to use it 23 days each year? You know, I mean, it really comes down to those figures. So the way I see it is we're wasting a bunch of money over the next decade of mm -hmm. paying $400 a day to rent, and you know that's going to go up through time. Transport. Right, exactly. Time and gas and whatever else. Do we have records of how often we rented chippers over the last couple of years? How many days of rental? Well, it's different because we only rented it for the because you weren't required, right? Yeah, so, so the whole obligation has changed, right? So you're, you're anticipating. Right. So we, need need to to we need a tree department. <laughs> Are you volunteering? Yeah. <laughs> we'll put the tree warden in charge. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Um, yeah, that really would be going astray. But, uh, but yeah, well, so we could let the tree warden take care of all the cleanup. Yeah. The phone calls. Maybe all the phone calls could be directed to the tree. No, this is, it's a, this is a whole nother thing because the tree warden accepted this position, you know, thinking that you thinking that this would, you know, not knowing that it's going to be the tree warden's responsibility to post legal notices and conduct hearings and everything. That is different. So if we have a big storm, there's lots of trees on the road, we're responsible for them. What Ronnie said. Not that there's a storm in that. It's just the trees are falling down. Yeah, yeah we I go out. We've had a storm and we're especially responsible. Yeah, but I go out probably five, six times a month yeah. mm -hmm. during the night. To mm -hmm. the tree. Mm -hmm. And if there's a big storm that affects the other areas, there might not be chippers that are available. Right? Yeah. So that's the other possibility. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get another. 
Yeah. No, another unfunded from, from when from when the money is made available, are these things laying around in the lot, or do they have to be special ordered and sent from China and everything else? Yeah, the one I'm, I'm priced out is the Canadian one, which is a year and a half out. Oh, all of them, all. A year and a half out? Do you get it? And, and when I place the order, we cannot wait. A year and a half to fill one or the other. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Jesus. What's the typical lifespan of a chipper? I don't know. The one we've been using is a 2011. Okay. So you figure 10 years is. I mean, it's how you take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, my, my thoughts are, I don't even know the schedule, but again, try, by way of process, Capital Improvements Committee make the meet in November sometime in a few weeks, we make a, a formal vote. Is that what you're thinking, Blaine? Yeah, right. we'll, we'll have another joint meeting November okay. 7th, November 7th, I think. Okay. It's, right. And if we need to, we do it next week, too. Mm -hmm. Next week as well. But, yeah, everybody, well, I mean, the, the select board and the finance can certainly meet together and vote there. Yeah. Um, recommendations for those, and capital can do it as well. And, and you're not obligated to meet jointly. You can always have your own meeting. But yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And if it hears it's recorded. Just let so you know, at the uh, city of Pittsfield has a contract with Crane. Uh, they, yeah, over there on Route Nine in Dalton, they bring all the trees, and he, he chips them up for wood wood burling furnaces. The company that literally prints their own money. Yeah. Well, let's bring it over. So yeah, but they have a way to get it rid of it. Too bad Montgomery Roseville is still doing this thing. Yeah. It's not too far. I mean, we could we could track it all yep. the way. Yeah. Fourteen dollars a year to act. It wouldn't take long. No. All right. So is this so for what you want for what you want is this this number is not gonna is not capable of being made lower? That was state All right. Okay. Thanks, Arnie. The other item there because yeah, the box, the box. The triple box. Thank you. It makes sense. Yeah. And there's room in the garage to keep it. No, we need to add on. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> need a wood box. That's what I'm looking for. You got a quantum garage. All right. Anything else, Ron? You got time on the super block? We're pressing it out. Any questions on the chipper box? No, 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 Basically, every school budget in the state does this except for Frontier, and they've always just done capital spending out of their ordinary budget. It's not, and so we're trying to, so, you know, the, before you can spend out of a capital budget, you have to create a capital fund. So that's what this is. And it, so it's, this is, it's just to create it. I don't believe it's to put any money into it. Um, so this elementary school has one, but the frontier doesn't. That is true. Wow. And that is we we and this, um, this year I think Deerfield is trying to start their own for their own elementary school. So we're way ahead. We we've been we we did this seven years ago. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so um, what are there any particular items that are are uh, think anticipated to be happening? Yeah, there's massive up. There's like oh, yeah, you, you um, the roof of the library, the media center. Yeah, that's not no, the, the roof of the whole building. Oh, wow. It's 20, it's now 27 years, 24, I forget, wow. but it's, it, the warranty's gone. 
and the furnace is an issue. The boilers are so the, the roof is um, two two million two two to three, um, and the whole that whether to go the school building authority route is whatever. There's it's just a lot of stuff going on just with the roof. The emergency stuff that for the roof is just six wet spots that are a total of under a hundred thousand, and I think that's going to be coming up this year. But and that'll buy a few years for the regular for the rest of it. But there's all this pressure to put solar on that roof, which drives up the the, the first frontier big, big budget thing is the tennis court slash pickleball court. Mm -hmm. um, and if you think the pickleball group here in this town is like new and there's more than a hundred people or whatever. The one in Deerfield is hundreds of people and they come to the meeting saying we, we, we need a new, uh, but the, that, that, that's already all engineered and all ready to go for this year. That's 300,000 for the four, it's a four court court. Um, and it's whatever. So that the boilers are, um, it, the, bo the boilers are gigantic there. They're, they look like a submarine, yeah. um, and they, they um, they're oil, the combo oil gas, mm -hmm. and um, they want to make them just, but it, that, that's, to replace them is a million, whatever, but we're going to be working in chunks, they got like, it's like replacing a part of a submarine, it looks like, yeah. and, but, so that's a big number, the parking lot is, the parking lot is a mess, yeah. and that's a not, that's a big number. Oh, yeah. Asphalt parking yeah. lots are hugely expensive. Yeah. It's depressingly expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. The like a, like a million bucks a mile. Yeah. A mile of road, you spread it all over a parking lot. Yeah. You're getting the yeah. ways of that. Yeah. Flat so then, and all of these things have green energy out. You know, the whatever the they want the 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 parking lot's supposed to be. Water supposed to be able to go through that whatever yeah, now yeah, instead of runoff, yeah. and that just that, that drives the cost like way up. The, there's all these so there's big capital needs coming down the pipe because that build that building is now of that age where that those major oh, yeah. things need to get in place. I have a question in terms of allocation because uh, every year, depending on the student enrollment, each town is allocated a different percentage. Yeah. So uh, we're seventeen. We're seventeen this year. Seventeen. So how is it going to work when, when there's multi-year commitments? They do. A, you do a five-year rolling average. So five-year rolling average. Yeah, and that's, it, yeah, that's, that's your number. Year, that's locked right? in. That's your number. So it will be done by a five-year rolling average. We've had a couple of surprise. One, one surprise in the last five years. So I mean, I'm just the surprise is that Sunderland's numbers keep going up because they built a new apartment complex. Mm -hmm. So that's. That's good for us. The yeah. student enrollment there um, from tier barely decreased. Yeah. So we're working on a five year rolling average. So just in terms of our, our budget, how we how we plan for it, we have some we have some idea of a heads up of how to allocate funds, right? Yeah. So how does it work now without the capital stabilization fund, which I assume is going to they won't be more predictable they, for us. To, they've been they've been uh, periodically budget, making right? specific capital requests okay. in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but they a lot more. Uh, all these capital eligible by definition expenses are just being paid out of the regular ordinary budget. Right. So if they wanted to do the roof this year, they'd have a million dollar capital out uh, that they would they would send out to the towns, and we'd have to pick up pay whatever our portion was, our seventeen percent of right. that request. Right. And now that there's a stabilization fund, we're just going to be paying chunks based on that that 17 percent allocation and then you'd still be voting you just got to vote it's still a two-thirds vote to take money out of the step stabilization yeah. okay. so uh, uh, phil phil yeah. so how um how is it determined you know for let's say a new boiler um and let's say there was some money in the stabilization fund but so who determines if they want to go out and borrow for some of it so under the law that your school committee has the legal ability to incur debt and bind the town to that debt, the, they have to serve notice of doing that. The select board can object to it. And if they can hold a town meeting within 30 days or something nearly impossible um, to, to, but basically 
the, this, the, the school committees never exercise that authority. They always try to work, well, as long as I'm not, you know, you try, try to work with the towns a little bit because you can't burn bridges like that. Um, so, um, although sometimes it's tempting because you got to deal with, because, you know, Deerfield's still 49%. Or forty eight percent, and majority rules, and so it. Some of us, it's always chafed that we have to comply with Deerfield's wishes in so many regards. But, um, okay, I mean, you hear <clears throat> two million for a roof; it's a scary number, and I'm sure. That right, and Deerfield just had their elementary roof like two years ago, three years ago, and they went the school building authority route because they promise you that you know the state pays at least fifty percent. But you don't find out what the state pays until you after you started the process. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they uh, but what what happens is that the process is becomes so much more expensive. You can only use those handful of contractors that are based in either Boston or Springfield. Mm -hmm. The quality of work is notoriously bad. Um, the cost of everything is notoriously high, and you have no ability to influence the project and its ongoing escalation in costs once it starts. So you like the, whether or not you're actually saving money is like this hugely complicated question um, that requires really smart people to figure out. Sounds like a uh, useless process. You have to pay the real money. Yeah. Phil, this capital group, though, I mean, you know, has completed a project, the, 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 uh, uh, the football field uh, uh, at Frontier. And yes, this, the, it, 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 if you want to go see, you know, a success. Absolutely. Go, go down and look at the new track uh, at, at Frontier, and it's really beautiful, and it was horrible. Yeah. And schools were refusing to come to away meets on our track. It was right. bad. And that's that's what the, there's actually the state athletic well, high school athletic thing banned competitions from our tennis court. Like we can't have it. We have to go to a. Where you go, DA? Well, when they let us. <laughs> um, but basically, they went to DA once. They've gone to like uh, I think they had to go to Mohawk once. They've gone to uh, Eagle Brook once. But basically, um, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 not it's not conducive to athletic endeavors for sure. So, um, and we've known the tennis court was coming for a long time, and we can spend and tennis court CPA money can be used. It's up to the town to decide how these things are are, are how the towns wish to. Recreation. They added that yeah. in later. Yeah, so we so we pay our portion of it with our CPA. Right. The, the, so and that's that's going to be my fervent wish that that takes place for our portion of the tennis court. Um, that that we pay for it out of CPA money instead. What of about the portion for the roof? Yeah, that's for a the tough, boiler. Yeah, those those I I don't think there's categories for those in the CPA law. Mm -hmm. but. I mean, there's talk because the union the district does have bonding power. Right? There's what? Does the Union District have bonding power? Then there was a discussion like four or five years ago. Conway Grammar School School Committee has bonding power. And so does the Union 38 School District, right? Um, well, no, the Union 38 is not a district, it's a superintendency union. It's a different. It's a but we're different. talking about them having bonding powers. The Frontier does. Yeah, Frontier. Frontier, does. Frontier and, and Conway Grammar School. Right. So Frontier can, can you know, provide. If you have to, we can always talk about doing the bond if you want to develop phase it in on the third time. Yeah, for the roof, that's roof what's going to be happening. Roof the roof and the boiler are probably and as well. Paving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so rating, I should say, in paving. Yeah. Green bonds. Probably one, it's just because it's not. Well, the, the, you, can, the, you, can, you can take it over a period of time. With the, the amount that we authorized to borrow for the track, that actually we ended up using much, much less than yeah. that. Than that. Um, we had talked about being $15,000 in payment of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, has the second boiler been repaired? Um, so that, well, there's no longer three feet of standing water in the boiler room. So if that counts as a repair, <laughs> yes. Well, the electrician but, likes that aspect. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but but there's you look at it, it looks like it's been like it, it's been like hit by artillery or something. There's this there's punctures in it and it's just holes in it, and it's just it's bad. You're approaching Olympic. Yeah, and that was the problem that 
there's two of them and the one went down and then the second one went and they had a cup they had to cancel school for like two days last year or something yeah, yeah. so you asked what's down, coming down the pike there's your answer everything um yeah here we are yeah so so that's why stabilization funds can't hurt yeah and it could be a combination of the stabilization fund and uh, debt to help levels like we did with our highway garage yeah that jan had negotiated could be a combination of both. and then i, I know what this what the school committee talked about too is filling the the capital stabilization fund with E and D money. So E and D in the school context is that's what free cash is called for the school district, or whatever. And um, and the, the the what this what our school has done that continues to do that no other school does is they take half of their E and D and they send it back to the towns every year. Um, and they get no credit for doing that at town meeting. But um, and I think that. The intent now is to still send it back to the town, but to send it back to the stabilization. Yeah. You want to vote tonight? No. Uh, <laughs> at least that one might be a quicker vote next time. That was a long discussion. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's. Our business is concluded with the finance committee. We're excused. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Leave the chairs here. I put them back. They may come over. Good night, everybody. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for sure. Okay, bye. You got the one to get your early. Yeah, right. <laughs> get your early for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. Um, are, are you here for the uh, conservation commission? Yeah. All right. So, can we, yeah, you're up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You get to introduce yourself. <laughs> He's my replacement, so don't turn him down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Tony Summers. Thanks, Tony. And uh, I'm new to the area, but um, I'm a, a uh, landscape architect for an environmental consulting firm. So I do a lot of NOIs and RDAs and trail design and stuff like that. So I thought um, being part of a new community, I could kind of leverage some of my skills to help the town. <laughs> he just walked into a meeting and said, Can I help? Wow. <laughs> Super. Thank you, Tony. Um, you have any questions of us? Great. So I'll make a motion to appoint Tony Summers, also Mary Kay Costello, and Brittany Nickerson to the Conservation Commission. I will second that. Which, which is a hardworking commission. And they do, it is a valuable commission. They do like really good work. It's, we have to have one. Man. It has to work. It has to have a quorum. It has to be functional. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, so, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. And, Thank you so you, much. You have a three year term, right? He has a three year term. They all have three year term. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got three year terms. Can somebody please shoot me an email with the names of the two that will be? Yeah.
Um, they didn't need more than that. Three three people. Okay, three people. Um, thank you. Appreciate that. They told you how grueling it would be. Um, <laughs> All right, so while, while we're on the appointment thing, just to knock off. So I um, move to approve Jan Warner and Jim Newsom as parks and rec committee members also for three years. We're supposed to stagger them, I don't know. They might not be three years. I like the idea of long appointments though, because then it's just, you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, let's go for the max. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, before you go for the max, there's a suggestion for the first one. Watch the expiration dates of everybody else because you don't want everyone expiring at the same time. Yes, yeah, I, know. I know. But these are, these are, yes. These are building empty. Yes, they have so, been empty for a long time. And so you're nobody, right, it was just yeah. I'm only saying that because if you have two other committee members that are also expiring in 2025, so we'll do up to three years and then you can stack the eyeball eyeball the appointments yeah, once because you'll lose your whole board if you have five Yeah, that's five we don't want that. But thank you. It, that's a good point. So the motion is for Jim Warner and Jim Newsom. Pickleball's taken over the world. Yeah, right. Um, parks and Rec. So there's motion and second. Yeah, we may have to leave, but they are because it's unanimous. Parks and Rec, there's three vacancies. Why is that you I just look, there's not listed. listed. Would you shoot me an email to remind me? Yeah, we'll we'll send something these things. tomorrow. We'll figure that out. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right, so that meant um, it was passed unanimously. Yep. Yes. For up to three years. <coughs> um, so now we move to all things transfer station E. Do you want to go ahead and should what? we vote to open the warrant first, just so that that's oh. sure. I mean, because that yeah. All right. So we are we are going to be having a special town meeting Saturday, December tenth at ten a.m. And I'm going to make a motion to open the special town meeting warrant now. Effective tonight. For a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Yes. Theory is that people will like that more or dislike it less. We'll find out. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. I thought we were just going to listen. It's up to you. You were invited to participate fully and completely. <laughs> First thing, you know, the, the mattress situation, which gosh, I read that, I just uh, made my head hurt reading yeah. that. I have copies of the press release. Just yeah, that it is. Yeah. So the what's on the agenda is to raise the mattress price to thirty five dollars for ruined mattresses. Going to say ruin the mistresses. That's a bit different. Um, but the, yeah. So, you want to talk to, to us about why it's necessary to raise the price to $35 for ruined mattresses and then. So, this, and this is supposed to be recycling a mattress? No. So, right now, the price is $25 for a mattress up at our transfer station. Right. The confusing part of this is that. 
but the law has changed. We now have to recycle these mattresses. The solid waste district has given us these five, six places actually where residents can take them. They cannot bring a clean mattress to the transfer station here because we don't have the capability of recycling. So they have to go to one of those six places. However, if the mattress they bring in is ruined in some way, if it's wet, if it's got bed bugs, if it's moldy, um, they are allowed to dump it. Our wonderful transfer station attendants now get talking about you know another duty that they need to do. They have to now record if that goes into our bulk heap because it's ruined and cannot be recycled. They have to have the sheet and write down the reason why. So that when somebody comes back from the state or whoever might be inspecting when they show up at the transfer station, because the, what, how this all gets done is that at, when it gets sent to, and I'm talking about a different kind of transfer station, you know, like a huge one where all the trash comes in from the trash trucks, right? And it gets shipped out to wherever it's being taken care of, disposed of. There are inspections that happen there. And if they see mattresses, they're going to say, where did those come from? And then they're going to come back and look at these sheets that our transfer station attendants are reporting. Okay, well, this was a room that we reported this as a room mattress, whatever. So it doesn't make sense for us to not charge the same price, at least for the ruined mattress that we are now having to pay, the residents will have to pay for a clean mattress. So that to me, it was just kind of like, well, we really should raise the price to $35 for a ruined one as well. But we'll, we're only going to take ruined ones, right? Correct. Okay. We can only and take it's the ruined ones. it's going to be up to you guys to decide what. That's where it gets thick. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. My, how many people have ever watched Mike Rowe? Who, who Mike Rowe is? The oh, yeah. dangerous jobs? Yeah. Yes. Dirty jobs. Mike Rowe did a, an hour session on mattresses where he went out with the driver that was picking him up. And they made him wear a Tyvek suit, that the equipment, into the truck. He took it to the next station. It got more intense with how they handle it. And they were saying that it can be infectious diseases, it can be dead bugs, it can be mites. It can be anything in the world that you're touching when you touch the mattresses. So now you want us to touch the mattresses for one thing with no training. Well, so, no, it's not different than it was before in terms of going into both. You don't have to touch them. Yeah. We have to touch them to get them into the dump center. No, it would be the person just as it's been before. So, no, we have because you can't have the so town residents pick because... them up and carry them through that trash and cut themselves, trip, break their leg. Okay, but that's a, that's a different issue because nothing has changed between them if you've already been. Well, I'm just going to what Mike Rowe was showing right. about how he had to be trained. And I, and... I, I, yeah, okay. I, I kind so of even talked about this separately just because we have a whole training on bed bugs and all this kind of stuff. Well, we haven't had it through with you. Yeah. Uh, another thing is why would somebody pay $35 when they could just take it out in the backyard, urinate all over it, take it to the dump for $25? Yeah. So that was the flaw in the whole thing that I that 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 was my first when I was reading it, I was like. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Now, we were hand, we were given these, we were told to hand them out. So the first day that I was giving it to them, I gave these handouts and somebody says, well, it's $35. I assumed it was. So I charged them $35. I gave some of the money back to the people that I charged. Okay. The okay. other part is on a check. I don't have the number. So oh, I'll find it. Town hall okay. can do it. Yeah, I didn't appreciate asking what happened to the extra money over the months. I really didn't appreciate that. I didn't know when it started, but that again is a little different from. Well, no, because I, I'm going to bring it up in front of everybody. That's fine. Okay, because that's fine. To me, it was very insulting to the transfer people because we don't steal. But when we're accused of what happened to the money, nobody was accused of stealing. I just wanted what to know. happened to the money over the past few months. But I said I looked back. So this is an email that I had sent because I had been told that they had started charging $35. I didn't know when they started char charging $35. So I, I went back and looked at all of the receipts that had come in and they were all listed as 25. So that was my question. One, why, was, why were they charging $35? Because that 
press release came from the district. It was not something from me that said we're charging 35. So that was the issue. Well, to me, when it says what happened to the 35 to the money, to me that sounds like somebody's accusing somebody of taking some money. It was the question. And that's what you know, I was asked, but neither here nor there. But so you agree we should be charging 35. I think, yeah, it should. And I think they should, we should have some precautions because we've been keeping people out of these dumpsters because they're going to hurt themselves and there's liability. Mm -hmm. And they got to carry them in there. And there's nails, there's glass, there's everything. So do we let some 80 year old? So you don't let anybody go anywhere near the dumpster? We try our best not to. Right. Well, that's, that's why I was saying I'm not sure why something's different now because. That would be having you know people putting it over or anyway, but we can definitely the bulky is is not fun because it, ideally where it should be placed if we had a proper way to do it would be it would be down below so people could just take things and kind of shove them in rather than having to try to pick it up and go over. We don't have that set up. We have disposable gloves. They have gloves. We oh, have they've got gloves. plenty of gloves. That's not, we have that's not gloves. the issue. Yeah. But there's, there's more than just the gloves. I mean, you know, how do you know if it's got bed bugs? You got to cut the mattress open. That's the well, only way you're going to find you out. You wouldn't it's got want to bugs. do that. But again, I went through a whole training on bed bugs. To be honest with you, there are a lot less of a problem than mosquitoes and ticks, just so you know. But I know that everybody gets really freaked out. I know out there's by them. disease in this town. And that some of the mattresses we eventually get there. And I know that in, in certain areas, the, the, the mattresses that are really bad have to be wrapped in plastic before they're accepted. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I would say, in terms of that, there are going to be a lot less mattresses coming to the transfer station now as it is, unless, of course, if people start messing them up and then we should be charging 35 for them instead of 25. So if people, Starting, I guess, today, um, this is only for recycling mattresses. Correct. Like, I can't take a gross mattress to South Deerfield. Mm -hmm. nope. They'll tell me that I have to take it back to Conway mm -hmm. and, and dump it. Mm -hmm. right. So, our point is if they take it down there before they come to us and they get churned down, they're not going to make it back up here. They're going to come back up here. They're either going to be really pissed or they're going to make it. Mm -hmm. And then somebody from the town is going to have to go and pick them up on the side of the road. Or there will be fires because they will burn them. We've seen a few. Yeah. Which we need to say burn. is just for the record, and those who are watching, that is illegal. And, um, we, and, and, and it is statewide, it's happening everywhere. So this is not a unique to Conway situation. This is happening everywhere across the state mm -hmm. right now, starting November 1st. Is, and if yeah. the town does catch you, the town will prosecute. Like if you burn mattresses mm -hmm. in the woods, that mm -hmm. is not cool. Mm -hmm. If you have a burn pit in your backyard. Yeah. Still illegal. Um, yeah, you're less likely to get caught, I imagine. But um, yeah. I, I know it's toxic. Yeah. There's, there's toxic chemicals in it. But the, the average person doesn't know that. Yeah. So I mean, we got people that they don't care. So it's up, to us to, it's up to us to determine if it's sturdy or not. Mm -hmm. So that's where the rub is. So. Yeah. So we need some sort of guidelines. Well, Jan gave you the sheet, the sheet that I brought up there. That's that's all the guidelines I've been given. I can't. I know that's not a lot. I, mean, I know. I'm I'm well aware. But that's all I have to go on. So I can't give you more than what I have. I will say this just in, if somebody's interested, the way the recycling happens, it's not like rocket science. Basically, they rip the cover off, they pull out the foam, they pull out, you know, all the I, I've seen it done. And they pull out the metal. So if somebody wants to go through that trouble to separate it, they can do that. And then they can bring it to the transfer station and the metal would go in the scrap metal and then the bulky would go in the bulk. We've seen that done too. So right? yeah, I'm just saying it's another option for people. Yeah, I, I got this one, I, I decided that we'll, we'll talk about this first because I thought this would be like the easier topic and that we could get through <laughs> this really quickly. Um, transfer station. And this, the thing is that it might actually be the easier of all the topics too. That's the thing. 
It's yeah. got to be at least made equal to some of the other ones. It's what, what? The price has got to at least be made equal to the other towns. We're the only town that doesn't do it. Yeah, I mean, that's an easy vote. You got to do something about that bulky container. It's getting abused. People are bringing stuff from other towns. Hey, my father's down or whatever. I, I've heard of people say it, <laughs> and not just once, a few times. And it's been so a few years. Like we are, with, so I, I don't know if anybody. And at another time, right? You're going to bring us up? Well, no, we're doing at, at special town meeting. Okay. There's a warrant article where we're going to, the town will vote on a policy. They will- I thought that's what this was for. No. Well, this is just, this is, well, first, we were just talking about the mattress first. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, but no- what he just said, this is just mattress. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But um, like I'm talking about, um, uh, you know, the one of the options is gonna be something on the order, you know, the, the, the having, the, adopting the per bag sticker, including a hundred of them or something like that with your permit windshield sticker every year. And, uh, and but then anything more than that, people would pay. Got a lot of growth. <laughs> Got a lot of growth coming down. Yeah. So you're gonna have to vote on the raise the price from that tonight, right? No, but you, we're, we're, we're gonna, but the, the idea is though that- um, For the mattresses, yes. Yes, we're doing that, the mattresses tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, right. but like an overall way of going forward. Um, like we're gonna, that town meeting is gonna get a chance to weigh in on how they want it, what what, what menu, how, how they want it to work. Okay. Because right now it just, everything, $200,000 a year goes to the property taxes. Hey, we haven't we haven't told them to be anything on that decision. Yeah, well, there, there hasn't been a decision, that's the thing. Yeah. The, the, the bag sticker program, just for your just point about bulky, that doesn't affect the weight starting to be bulky at all. Yeah. So that's not going to stop someone from saying, oh, my father found this, this I, I do, boy, I do have and a I want to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. And it's still, Am I'm I talking sharing? about all the stuff. Yeah. I'm not just talking about it. And I, I want to though. I, I, I like no, no, we, we want we sharing. want I'm just I would have to Am I allowed to share my proposal with them? Hmm? Am I allowed to share my proposal? So we, we, we can do that like the week before. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, to that's actually a good idea. Yeah. 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 To, 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 to start to <laughs> good idea. Basically, no. So that's the discussion that needs right. to be done. Right. 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 So you will see bulk on there. So if we okay to raise the price of what would you move to make to, oh, to, to the $35, the mattress $35. Yes, yeah, so you would make a motion to, to raise the price for ruined mattresses at the transfer station to be $35 instead of $25. Well, I wonder if, I mean, I personally, I would recycle the mattress. I wonder, I mean, if it was, if I thought it was recyclable, I wonder if people are going to pay the same to either throw it away here in Conway and you guys have to decide whether or not Absolutely. it's recycled, whether it's clean or not. If we actually charged more for them to throw away a mattress here in Conway, sure. we could say, well, sure. then, you know, they might be, they might be more likely to, they might not to all ruin it purposely oh, and take it. No. They might be more likely to yep. take it down to Deerfield do and pay 35 because they'll say, we don't care. We don't want to look at your mattress. We're going to charge you 50 bucks to get rid of it. I love it. That is a brilliant <laughs> idea, too. I just had it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. because that takes you out of loop of having to decide. Is this but they can leave a good mattress out in the rain, and we still have to take it. Yeah, but, 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 but we'll they charge, charge like 50 bucks. We'll charge They're not going to want to leave it out in the rain. Yeah, if they know it's this is a decent mattress, I can pay to recycle it in Deerfield, or I can pay to throw it away in Conway. If we charge more for them to throw it away in Conway, just say, you know, regardless of what it looks like, we're just we're throwing it away. Um, well, they can't do it with clean ones here anyway. That's illegal. So, right. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but if they, but I love it because then that means that if they get the notion to go ruin it, 
then they still have to pay 50 bucks as opposed to if they kept it clean, they could have taken it to Deerfield for 35. Right. That's a good return. I mean, Except I don't know. Most, that most people, most, most people, people, people will save the time and the gas to travel. Oh, we didn't get candy. Are you going to put it outside in the rain or you're going to spill soda on the rain? And it's not anything about being decent and honest, it's about saving time and gas. Mm -hmm. Then what about the ones that have a puppy lots that ain't Louis on their bed? Yeah. Charge them fish about the dog's accent. Apparently. We put that in. You want me to say the real word? You want me to say the real word? I can say poopies too. <laughs> Get with those like those CSI guns to see, you know, like shine a light yeah. on. Everybody see you can tell exactly what it is. Yeah. Or a fluorescent light. Yeah. No, I don't think I want no, to. I don't want to do that. This, then, then rather not know. Many a mattress of steam. That was pretty disgusting. Come in. So your proposal is what? How much? Well, just make it more than it costs. Make make it cost more to dispose of it than it does to recycle it. Make it worth going to Deerfield to do the recycling. Yeah. I think the 15 bucks, I, I mean, I would go to DSL instead of having, you know, cost me less than 15 bucks to get to gear from there. Or wherever they accept them, right? Yeah. Right. I, mean, I think even if you did 10, it would help deter it. I mean, if you go, if you go up to 50 bucks, you're double the <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking 45. <laughs> okay, or 45. Yeah, I'm just saying just make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just create some kind of incentive for, for people to recycle. All right. What's the number? 45? 47.50? I, I, I would personally say 50. Also, I, I otherwise, you're going to have to, but they're going to have to have $5 on hand at all times or whatever, right? We do anyway. Well, yeah. it's a lot easier yeah. for somebody to give you an even. Yeah. I can see Ron having to pick up on mattresses now. He's going to have a chip with him. <laughs> <laughs> you want that nasty stuff all over you? Yeah. <laughs> that we can do. It's right in the highway department. I've picked up many on the highway. Well, maybe 45. I mean, if somebody does have a legitimately ruined mattress, too. Like Lori said, doubling it might be a bit yeah. much. So but, yeah. but, but you want the deterrent. Yeah. I mean, and but I have, I mean, I had I had a mattress that I wanted to get rid of, and that's what I was told. Just keep te tear it up, separate. I mean, I actually went through the trouble of doing that because at the time I didn't want to spend only five dollars. So. Well, some people might not have it. And, yeah. And we try yeah. to help them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There well, that's what yes, I mean, I wouldn't have thought to do that, but someone told me. In the new website. I mean, could we put something in there along with the transportation? When this gets I, settled. Yeah, I'm recycling the mattress, you know. Hey, yeah. save money and time. You can just do this. I can do that for sure. What yeah. about? I didn't want to get that section. What about, what, we what about one yeah, time right. a year? Actually, I've got a lot to do in there. What about doing something one time a year where you guys can get all of your hazmats and whatnot? You know, and we can do one time mattress a year where right. it's a lower cost. A nasty waste from And we've got 24 yeah. hours picking up mattresses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun, right? Is there park <laughs> and and Cricket Hill. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 35 bucks, right? Uh, 45. Well, 45. Well, you know, I don't know it offhand, but in Greenfield, um, does it say on that? $30. $30 plus, plus five for out of towners. So it ends up being 35. Right, but they don't say anything about ruined mattresses. So. No, I think they do. So that's they could take any mattress. Yeah, because they just drop it in, in that garage and they push it with a, a backhoe. They don't touch it. Well, they're going to be having to change their system. They can't. They're going to have to put it into a container. The soiled ones? No, no, not the soiled right. ones. Right, 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 right. Um, the soil ones, they have, like I said, they have an area where you can drive oh, it back in, drop it, and then they push it with equipment. Um, yeah. I, I, so I, mean, I think it's a tough choice. I mean, you're, you want to deter them for 
for ruining the mattresses on purpose, but you don't want it to be so much that they're just gonna throw them in the woods. Yeah. So I mean that 35 might be I'm enough I'm for them to throw them in the woods. I don't think I think we're saying 45. Yeah. 45 to get rid of the mattress. So Wednesday when I come in, I'm gonna start saying 45 more. Yes, if we vote on that. If now, it's yeah. a ruined one, if it's a clean one, you tell them you can yeah, that say you've got to go. Yeah, there. for 35. You can go there for 35, but if you drop it off here, if it's ruined, you can take it. And that goes for a box spring too, right? Right. That goes for anything on our list. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And the determination will be in our best judgment. Still, it's okay. We're not going to make these changes sometimes. I know. I know it. I, I mean, I, I guess so. Your best judgment based on the very small sample list that they gave you, right? Yeah. So it's a very tiny. No, we would use our common sense. We, we wouldn't. Okay. That okay. looks like something that you would let your kids sleep on 17 years old. I guess we're going to get a lot of mattresses. <laughs> No idea that people went through so many mattresses. I can't remember the last time I bought a new mattress. Well, and I think a lot more people are going to be saying if they get a new mattress, you have to take money from it. Yeah. So. so people get so many people get their mattresses online now. And that's not enough. Maybe more Flanagan's on I know that will voluntarily so take theirs away and buy one. And they still fight you. Purple. It doesn't work. Whatever. What are all those different brands? Casper. Mm -hmm. gets those now. Church are a thousand dollars, so they can yeah. spend their thirty-five. I know. <laughs> if you're buying that mattress, you can afford to recycle your old one. Just one more. All right. But I would so, say we get an average of four to five a week. A week, a week. on our shifts. Yeah. Not for sure. Yeah. That 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 comes, that's the thing. That that's over two weeks. Yeah, some of those are just coming in from yeah, our families yes. and right. because that's yeah, so it's two or three of these are only a thousand. Which is crazy. Yeah. Yep. There's yeah. still a lot of mattresses. It's a lot yeah. of mattresses. <laughs> For some yeah. Right. Well, and the other question is, were they all coming from content? They can't. So, I mean, statistics, they can't see that. That was Jan's whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Seems like you're, they've got to be. What was she? What she estimate that how much of Deerfield stuff we're throwing at her? Yeah. yeah. So. So um, I'll make a motion that we raise the price for the the, the, the mattress disposal to forty five dollars. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The bathroom drum. Oh, it's really? Yeah, so it's, we've had that happen here already. It's not pretty. Thank you. What? What? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yes. Thanks. All right. Let me take a look at the employee recognition donation fund. Yes. <laughs> well, those are famous last words in this room. <laughs> um, is, uh, um, is any, any, anything about that that anyone wants to discuss? Any kind of implied? I didn't really have any questions now. Mm -hmm. right. say that then? Well, I didn't know if you wanted me to explain it for the, yeah, I guess for the should, folks at home. Yes, yes. Um, that, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about when people retire, when, um, when maybe somebody, and, and we're talking about town employees, has a loss, or if we want to have some kind of um, celebration or something, we have not had a fund that we could use to pay for those. So people have been basically paying out of pocket, which this would be anyway, but this would be sort of an official way to channel it. So people could make donations to this fund 
and then we could use it as it says in here to support and recognize and for support and recognition of Conway Town employees. So that's all of this. That sounds good to me. Just this the official mechanism. So I'll make a motion that we create the employee recognition donation fund. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So um, I mean, I'd be I'd, I'd be okay with removing the personal handbook and to, um, associated transfer station issues um, to next Tuesday. We're, we're talking two hours already. That's yeah. just that's just enough. I'm sure. Yeah. So we are meeting next Tuesday. Probably says so. Thank <laughs> Okay. Yeah, right. okay, so we're going to table that till next week. And that will be November 1st at 6 p.m., right? Um, did you want to do it at the in the town offices okay. in the back room? That's fine. I mean, because I'm assuming if we don't want to feel pressured to have to be done by seven o'clock, so I yeah, but we should be done by seven. <laughs> yeah, so we should, um, but all right, sure. So we'll say in the town, yes, back from the town office yes. on Tuesday. Back to town offices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're in costumes. <laughs> Maybe a little bleary eyed from the night before, but. <laughs> The, the other item that was on this was to the letter of support for the best coach coach for next year, which we were able to ask to sign on that table. We, I guess we should do a motion because you're asking to use town facilities again. So. Well, we do because we do the contract, but I think this was just saying basically that we wholeheartedly support the Festival of the Hills and everything to do with it. Town administrator update. Yep. <laughs> They'll all be published on the website if people are. Do you want to share in particular? Um, Briefly. <laughs> uh, well, two things. Actually, one thing I should mention is that because Christmas and New Year's Day fall on Sundays this year, we're going to switch the transfer station hours. So they will be closed those Sundays. Just like we did for Festival of the Hills, and we'll be open the following Monday, not from 10 to 6, but from 1 to 6. Because it's a five hour shift on Sunday. So okay. it's a five hour shift on Monday. And it just seemed like the 1 to 6 is probably more convenient for most people because then you know, some, somebody wants to get there in the afternoon. They can. So hopefully that was the right call. But yes, we'll be closed those two days. All right. Uh, select board member comments, concerns. Veronique, this is yeah. Jan. Uh, I have a question. Isn't the uh, recognized holiday that Monday? So you would be asking them to work on a federal holiday? Oh, you know what? That I is a good right. question. Yeah. You're right. right, Jan. I think you are right. So the question would be what? Wait a minute. Let me look at the calendar. Uh, open on Friday instead. No, January 1st. Well, it depends on how you look at it, right? Because January 1st is the actual. Yeah. And then we've been asking them to work on the holiday. But to me, it doesn't really make sense. Then we, then we wouldn't be able to open any day, either of those dates because the first is the actual holiday. That's okay not to just open. That's okay just to close for Christmas and New Year's and not that. But well, on a weekday. No, not, not after Christmas. Everybody needs to get rid of their paper and cardboard. Trust me. That, that one you need to do. What else are you going to set your mattress on fire with? <laughs> All right. You know what? Let me, let, me, let me talk to the guys. The guys were fine with doing that. But 
if they're considered. Yeah. All right. Let me double check that. Thanks. <laughs> Just to make sure. I know when I used to work that shift, it, it, it depended on when you worked, you know, so I used to work Tuesday through Saturday. So if a holiday was on a Saturday, then I got the Monday instead. You know what I mean? It, so it can switch. So let me let me research it again, just to be sure. Um, yeah. So the the um, on your mail, the thing that I didn't just just to mention that we did get a preliminary request to for for a cannabis cultivate outdoor cannabis cultivation um, off of Shelburne Falls Road. To the, near to the Buckland Town Line. It's actually on Shelburne Falls Road between Park Road and Wilder Hill Road. And uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more about that. <laughs> um, and then announce so our next meeting is going to be Tuesday, six o'clock. Tuesday is the date of Tuesday. November, November 1st. 1st in the town offices and we are going to adjourn. We're going to be looking for a motion to adjourn the public portion of this meeting um, and go into executive session for reason number six to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property. The chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the town's position with respect to said real property Chair does so declare. So, um, so, so we're going to be we're going to be closing the open meeting portion of this, and we are going to be moving into executive session, and then we are going to be adjourning directly from executive session until next Tuesday. So that's that would be the motion that we make. Yes, yes, session. yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was that was three individual yeses. There's Chris three human Waldo beings here. <laughs> All of us were yes. Aye. And with that, the public session is adjourned. We stop the group.